They say baseball is America's favorite pastime. Most of us have either played or watched baseball being played. I've watched my three kids play Little League. My dad watched me play baseball when I was younger. And during my baseball career, I experienced a variety of streaks and slumps. A hitting streak for a player is a good thing. It's when a player gets a hit to get on base game after game after game. A slump is a bad thing. It's when a player fails to get a hit to get on base game after game after game. Lots of times in professional baseball, players will start out on a streak and then end up in a slump and go back to the minor leagues or out of baseball entirely. Streak to slump, then out of the game. Happens in baseball all the time. It happens in the church too. Do you know anyone who was on a hitting streak, spiritually speaking, on fire for God, full of passion for Him? And then all of a sudden, it seems like they hit a wall, a slump. And deep in their soul, they feel like their best days in Christ are behind them, not before them. Maybe you know someone like that. Maybe that someone is a person you love. Maybe that someone is you. King David of the Bible experienced a streak and then a slump. In his early days, uh, David is full of passionate love for God. You see this come through in 1 Samuel 17, when David goes up against Goliath. It's like he has no idea how outmatched he is. He has no idea how big Goliath is because David is enamored with the size of God. He's on a streak. But then at midlife, the age of 30, when David becomes king, he falls into a slump. You see this happen in 2 Samuel 11. Every one of us has a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad chapter in the story of our lives that we'd like to tear out and throw away. For David, it's 2 Samuel 11. The chapter begins, uh, at the time when kings go off to war, David stayed in the safety of the palace. I picture David sort of bored in his boxers, devouring Doritos, channel surfing for sports. And then he, in his boredom, goes onto the rooftop of the palace looking for something, anything to make him feel something or anything again. And he sees on the rooftop of the palace, he looks down and sees a beautiful woman named Bathsheba taking a bath. She's rightly named. Uh, David begins to lust after her, finds out she's married. David also is married, but that doesn't stop him. He commits adultery with Bathsheba. She becomes pregnant with his child. And then David has her husband, Uriah, murdered to cover up the adultery. Boredom to lust, to adultery, to murder. Talk about degeneration. Talk about a slump. And we wonder, how does someone like David go from streak to slump all of a sudden? Well, it didn't happen rapidly. It happened gradually. Up until 2 Samuel 5, when David becomes king, we read the phrase, David inquired of the Lord five times. So David had a habit of inquiring of the Lord, but after he becomes king, up until 2 Samuel 11, that terrible, horrible chapter, we don't see that phrase anymore. It's like, it's like David outgrew his need for God. And a lack of inquiry led to a lack of intimacy with God. The same is true in marriage. Couples that stop inquiring of each other begin to drift apart and they struggle. And I'm not talking about silly inquiries like, does this shirt make me look short? Uh, do these pants make me look frumpy? I'm talking about meaningful inquiry. How can I love you better? How can we as a couple make sure that our love for each other and for God goes deeper as we grow older? Well, David is stuck in a slump and he's not alone. Many Christians will admit, at least the honest ones will admit, that they are stuck in a slump. It can happen to the best of us, even those we deem to be spiritual heroes like David or my 75-year-old friend, Bill. We'll just call him Bill. That's not his real name. 
Bill is one of the most vibrant and vivacious Christians I know. He's mentored hundreds of Christian leaders. So when I was going through my own slump a few years back, I took him to breakfast in exchange for his counsel. And with some embarrassment, I confessed to him that I was in a spiritual slump. And to my surprise, he lamented, I feel like I've plateaued, he said. I don't feel like reading scripture or praying. I don't even want to go to church. And I was shocked by that. It can happen to anybody. The first step out of the slump, though, is to recognize that you're in one. Every baseball player that is getting better will analyze their stats sheet often because the stats don't lie. And they'll look at their last, say, 50 at-bats, how many times they walked, struck out, or got a hit, how well they're doing with the curveball, the fastball, the slider, because the stats don't lie. The Christian has a stat sheet, too. The at-bat for the Christian is every time we are up at the plate with a chance to love God or not love God in word, thought, or deed. So I realized I was in a slump when I was up at the plate with a chance to love God or not love God, get a hit or strike out, uh, gently instruct my kids or harshly criticize them, and I was choosing the latter. That's evidence I was in a slump. When I have a chance to uh, love God or not love God, get a hit or strike out by generously giving my time to people in need or withholding it grudgingly and I'm choosing to withhold it, that's a sign that I'm in a slump. When I know I am desperate to spend time with God uh, in prayer and scripture and silence and solitude, but instead I'm choosing uh, wasteful escapes like reruns of Duck Dynasty and Downton Abbey. I know things are pretty bad. I know I'm in a slump. The first step out of the slump is to admit that you're in one. But I've learned a valuable lesson. The slump doesn't have to destroy you. It can actually deepen you. Frank Robinson is one of the best players to ever play the game of baseball. In his rookie season, he had a phenomenal year. But then in his second season, he ended up in a slump. He went zero hits for 20 at-bats. And Robinson said, recalling that time, I didn't think I was ever going to get a hit again. But as you know, he did hit the ball again and became one of the greatest players to play the game. The slump didn't destroy him, it actually deepened him. The fact that you're watching this video and maybe, maybe reading the book is evidence that the slump will not destroy you, but deepen you. I pray that uh, this will launch you out of the slump and get you back on a streak again.